this is slightly different from others. I'm a neuroscience professor, I'm a surgeon. So, so I teach students, I teach medical students. And you know, you guess what? When you teach medical students, this is what happens. You feel like banging your head over the years. Over the last 10 or 12 years, I've devised new and new different techniques, interactive techniques, to make them get interested in about the brain and how to learn the brain. So therefore, I have created four technologies. And the first one, this one I've taken from the Visible Human Project of the National Library of Medicine. This is just a screenshot. I'm going to give you the demonstration right now. How to use this. And I think it will be much better if I show it to you and I'm going to show it to you right now. But before I show it to you, I have compared it with five other places which they have similar technologies on the basis of these seven parameters. And our work Out of seven parameters, scores five out of seven. So this is the demo video. Demonstration of how to use this project. How, how the students can learn about the brain. Because this is important. Because in clinical practice, we get what is known as MRI. Medical Resonance Imaging. And these are our slices like this. So how will the student learn to recognize an MRI unless they don't learn how to recognize all the parts of the brain? So I have got another uh, this thing. I've got the, the YouTube videos also. Is, if this was too low, I can show it in the YouTube also. Do you want it? I can show it there also. This is a quick demonstration on how to use this general interactive digital and brain project. On the left hand side of the screen, you see a few simple instructions. And on the right side, you see the image actually. This is what is known as a sedentary section of the head and the brain. These are the types of images that we get in magnetic resonance imaging, MRI images during clinical practice. And therefore, it is incumbent to the partner student to be able to identify each and every structure when they see a sedentary section of the head and the brain. So what we have done, we have hyperlinked every square millimeters of this image such that when the student holds his mouse cursor, when it becomes a hand, immediately that region shows up. The identification of that place and a few quick simple description. So therefore here you can see it's the varietal bone of the skull, this is the scalp, this is the superior sagittal sinus, this is the varietal bone of the brain, this is the proboscalosum, this is the cerebellum, this is the midbrain, the students can go either horizontally and they can see section by section, what is known as the axial section, they can go vertically, what is known as the coronal section, they can go oblique or they can go randomly and they can study there. So therefore this becomes a very easy to use, a very user friendly and a fun way of learning about the brain. We have created this project using scripts, active controls, hyperlinks, bookmarks and has been rendered in the form of a single trial web page. Whole brain. Now you see another part of the brain. So this is another interactive image. Cerebellum is a small brain which is in the back of the skull. Is an MRI? No, this is a histology of the cerebellum, but I'm going to show you that. Oh. The, the unique beauty of the cerebellum is it's got a lot of connections. Circuits coming in within the cerebellum, circuits going out. You know, you can imagine teaching all these things to the student is really crazy. And you know, they love to sleep, as somebody says. So, we have again created another system. Can we go to the next slide, please? So, these are some screenshots, and again, I'm going to show you the interactivity. The same things I'm going to show you. Let's go to our next demonstration on how to use the interactive digital cerebellum. As I told you, the cerebellum is one of the circuits, intracerebral circuits, inputs, outputs, etc., etc., and the students have a lot of difficulty trying to understand them. So, therefore, I've created this simple demonstration of how to use the interactive digital cerebellar circuits. 
Let's say the zoom clicks here. And immediately all the inputs are driven from the server cortex, by the star core, the server system, they all open up in front of the student. And the student wants to click on any one individual circuit that also is available for him to view. And if he wants to go back to the welcome screen page, he can see that. Let's say he wants to see what are the circuits inside the cerebellum. And therefore, this is one particular view of the cerebellum circuits inside. And if he wants to see in another view of it, he can get the same view. And if he wants to see any one individual, he can click on that and that will also appear in a third fashion in front of him. Then he can go back again. And let's see, he wants to see what are the outputs. He can see the outputs again from three different perspectives. And finally, if he wants to see the entire summary of all the cellular circuits, all he has to do is just click once and then the circuits inside and outside and within the cerebellum will all appear in front of him in a sequential fashion and then if he clicks again, the next circuits will appear and so on and so forth. They'll keep appearing from different, different parts and different perspectives. Again, this is a very fun and easy way to learn about the cerebellum circuits rather than from reading textual matter from the books. The students find it very easy, very useful, very user-friendly and it has attained a lot of great reviews. Students more interested in Second one, you see the first one, and this is all about the hypothalamus. That's another part of the brain. Now, this contains not circuits but nuclei. Nuclei means small collection of cells which perform different functions. Now, students have a lot of problem understanding what are the names of the nuclei, what do they function, and what do they do. So, these are some screenshots, and these are some eight screenshots, and I'm going to show you right now the same demonstration of. The Interactive Digital Hypothalamic Nuclear Project. The new, this is the first of the three sub-projects. This is a menu screen. This, let's say the student wants to see what is the dorsomedial nucleus. He clicks on it and takes it to the dorsomedial nucleus. He can see the location and the shape of the dorsomedial nucleus. Then again, he wants to see, let's say for example, he wants to see the posterior nucleus. And he takes it to the posterior nucleus. Now let's say he wants to see all the nuclei together. And then he takes it to all the nuclei and then when he's looking at it, he tries to figure out what is this ARN? He can't figure out. So he clicks on that and he takes him and tells him that this is the RQA nucleus. While he's doing that, let's say he wants to do a self-assessment quiz. So he clicks on that and he takes him to the quiz. And while he's trying to answer all these nuclei, he cannot figure out what is this one. So therefore he clicks on that and tells him that it's a ventromedia nucleus. So therefore this student can go back and forth in multiple different ways and he can see all the nuclei. This is the second of the three sub-projects. Again, this is the welcome screen. The student is faced with the hypothalamus. This is the location of the hypothalamus, but the return is nucleus. Now he wants to see the preoptic nucleus. He clicks on it and it appears in front of him. Then he wants to see the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and he clicks and it appears in front of him. And now he wants to see the paraventricular nucleus, and he, it appears in front of him. So he can keep clicking, and one by one, the nuclei will appear. And this is the third of the three sub projects. This is even more easy. Again, he's got the blank hypothalamus in front of him, and he just clicks once, and the preoptic nucleus appears. Then he clicks a second time, and the suprachiasmatic appears. Then the paraventricular, the anterior, the supraoptic, and so as he clicks each and one by one, the nuclei keeps appearing in front of him. So as you can see, this is very user friendly, and it shows the nuclei of the hypothalamus from different different perspectives, and it makes it very easy for the students not only to understand the location, shape, size, and is also a very fun way of learning. Third one. There are many more projects, and the next one, which is interactive, which I'm going to do with you, is not exactly about the human brain, but it's about something else. This is not exactly about the brain, but this was taken from the American Heart Association. What is your risk of developing a cardiovascular event in the next five years? Mm -hmm. These are some screenshots, and exactly three screen clicks of the mouse I will tell you your cardiovascular risk. So this is just a few screenshots here. This is the first page, this is the second page, this is the third page, and this is what it will tell you. But it won't be so mild, depending. Okay. Welcome to our next final demonstration. That is, um, what is your risk of developing a cardiovascular event in the next five years? So this is a program generated using the parameters from the American Heart Association and you'll find that it's very easy to use. So first you open, you're given this page here, you click on the link here which says click here to start the risk assessment. So this is something which I'll be doing on you also. Let's see. 
you are between 40 to 49 years of age before your code year is D. Let's say you are a diabetic, so DY, and let's say you're also a smoker, so your code is DYS. So we click on DYS. Now that brings it to the next page, and let's say you've been sitting in front of your computer 18 hours a day, and therefore your blood pressure is very high, it's 108 by 105 millimeters of mercury, 180 by 105 millimeters of mercury, and your cholesterol is also okay, very high because you're eating junk food. So 180 by 105 and cholesterol 8, you click here and you find that your risk of an event in the next 5 years is 15 to 20% which is very high. So let's try one more risk assessment since you are scared. Let's say you are 50 to 59 years of age, so you are C, you are non diabetic N and you are non smoker T, C and T. So we click here C and T. Let's say your blood pressure is rather reasonably well maintained, it's 140 by 85 millimeters of mercury, and your cholesterol HDL is 4. So 140 by 85 and cholesterol level is 4. We click here and you find that your risk of an cardiovascular event is 2.55%, which is rather high. So this is a very useful system which I've used on my patients and my students, and they found it very useful. I've created this program using scripts, active controls. Uh, bookmarks and links, and this has been rendered in a single file on the web page. So can you give me the full code so that we can have quicker? Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And if you have any questions for us,